Welcome everybody to the Ustream tonight for 7 Slot Society. Thank you all for joining us and uh, starting off here. My name is Dave and I am one of the partners of 7 Slot Society. Um, the resident JKU owner and I also have an MJ, both of which are broken down. <laughs> so in theory, I actually just drive a Nissan. So we could call it the Nissan Society if you want. <laughs> and next to me is Angel. I'll let him talk for a little bit. I'm Angel. Hello. Thank you for joining us again. This is the third or fourth one we've done. Um, yeah, it's a little from the hip tonight as usual, but that's the way we like it, and that's the way we're going to keep it. Uh, we have Jacob from Terraflex joining us tonight. Hi, Jacob. Yeah, we're actually going to have a interview tonight with TerraFlex, and Jacob will be joining us until he gets bored and cashes out. <laughs> but um, he will. We're going to have about a twenty-minute long interview with those guys. They were awesome enough to take their time to do that, so they'll be. We'll be having that in a little while. If you guys have any questions, he's logged into the chat, so we certainly recommend you guys um, asking him any questions about their products or, or what he's doing with his life. Uh, also, make sure you guys hop in on the chat. Um, you don't have to be registered with the Ustream account to chat, I don't think. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free. I have my computer over here, and I'll be checking the chats. Also, check out our sweet banner. We finally got one that actually fits in the screen instead of our other one that was way too small. And answering Jacob's question real quick here. Um, yes, I am a normal Jeep owner. <laughs> I own more than one Jeep, and they are all broken. <laughs> Luckily, I'm, I have a girlfriend, too, that actually owns a Jeep that works, which is nice, so it uh, gives me a little bit of my Jeep fix. Yep. I'm sure my neighbors probably wish I would get that thing out of the way. Um, we're going to give you guys a quick update on uh, Seven Slot. Angel's going to talk about some different things, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to talk about the website. Uh, so updates with Seven Slot. Uh, we're, I don't know if we talked about this in the last Ustream, but we're starting to print our own merchandise now, doing all our own... Uh, our t-shirts and hoodies. We're working on koozies. We have some koozies that we're working on. Uh, they're still in what you call research and development. Um, but we're doing some test prints, so hopefully we'll be able to put those up on the website soon. We still have the windshield decals up on the website, as well as JK and TJ keychains. Uh, we're going to be ordering more CJs, YJs, and XJs here in a little bit. Um, as far as the website uh, goes, yep. As oh, and we're also going to start doing these. My other ride is with uh, a different grill. We have all the different grills uh, and all the different colors. So those aren't on the website yet. I'm still cutting, cut, cutting them out. Um, but those are going to be available as well. Yeah. So with the website. Um, I'm going to be updating it more tomorrow, um, adding some new pictures on the homepage. Keep in mind, guys, that this club is all developed for you, so if there's a picture that you have of your Jeep or your buddies and you want it up on the website, feel free to email us and uh, we'll get it up on the website. We're going to try and change it out monthly, usually about a day after uh, the Ustream is over, I'll update the website. So like I said, if you have any pictures or anything you want up there, the more the merrier. Um, we can have as many pictures on there as we want. Uh, another thing with the website that you'll start to notice um, is there's a section for, for uh, friends of the society. And starting every month after we do our Ustream, um, we're going to highlight kind of a company. So, for instance, this this month we're doing Terraflex. So there will be a little section under, under friends of the society that will have Terraflex and links to their website and some different information about them and um, how you can get a hold of those guys. Um, speaking of TerraFlex, we need to be on our best behavior tonight, so I recommend doing what every Jeeper would do, taking a shot of tequila. Cheers. Cheers to everybody. <sighs> Yummy. Um, <clears throat> so, as Angel said, that we got the new sticker that's coming out as well. Mm -hmm. um, so let's move on to the Jeep world. Hold on. Also, for stickers, if you guys have an idea... For a sticker that you think um, everybody might enjoy, 
shoot us an email, sevenslotsociety at gmail.com. We can talk about it. If you come up with a really good idea, we might give you the first one for free. Just saying. Come up with some good ideas and shoot me an email. <clears throat> so, Angel, uh, do you want to update us on anything going on in the industry? Um, I don't want to jump ahead, but KOH is coming. KOH is coming. Tell me more about that. Do you know anything about it? Uh, it's the largest off-road race in the world, from what I hear. Wow. Yeah. Sounds pretty interesting. <laughs> in fact, it actually starts on uh, Friday. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the opening of Hammertown. And I don't know if Terraflex is going to be there. Jacob, if you could chime in and let us know if any of your guys are going to be out there. Um, also, you will be able to stream it from yes. your computers to watch mm -hmm. a lot of it. The website, and Angel's going to type it as well, will be yes. ultra4racing.com slash live. And you will be able to stream a lot of the events to see them yourself. Mm -hmm. Another... It's, oh, sorry. go ahead. It's definitely worth watching. I watched it last year when they were hosting it on Ustream. And as my wife can attest to, I would sit there late into the night with my phone like this in front of my face just watching people race all day. Because the coverage goes all day. They go through the, the motorcycle races... And then they do all the different classes, and it's streaming almost 24-7. So it's definitely worth checking out. And we definitely had some friends who were out there last year and mm -hmm. loved every minute of it. Um, it's something that I would love to one day eventually get to. Mm -hmm. Probably of all the Jeep things, that would be something that I would love to do. Um, our friends who were out there were actually the Four Wheel to Heel guys. You see their logo behind us. We'd love to support them. And in fact, our because it's been so long, we had our Belt to Heel event in October. Yes. Uh, that was up at Roush Creek uh, last October, and we did, this is the second year running, <clears throat> and we do this uh, so we can raise money for Four Wheel to Heal because they're doing some awesome things for our veterans. They take them out off-roading, um, you know, just to get them out of the, um, if they're in the hospital or, you know, just sitting at home being bored, they get them out, they put them on the trails, uh, and that can really aid in the, um, just taking their mind off their recovery. And I've gotten to meet a bunch of them, and they're just trying to get out, just relax, have some fun. So that's why we do it. Uh, this most recent year, we were able to raise $6,803 total for Four Wheel to Heal. Um, and that was all from people donating money for the raffle, um, the event fee, and uh, buying the shirts that we have, um, which we still have extras. If you guys want one, let us know. And I um, recommend you guys going next year if you missed it this year. It was a heck of a fun time. Um, like Angel said, we were able to raise a lot of money. We had about 80 Jeeps to 100 Jeeps, or was it way more than that? Uh, if you guys have ever been to Roush Creek, the line was coming out of the building and probably 100 feet in an L shape, and people were getting pretty pissed. So I'd say there was a lot of people there. And we actually have um, worked with Roush Creek already. We're not going to give out any dates yet. It's a little early for that. However, we are going to let you know that it is a go for next year. Yes, it is. So we will definitely be having it again. Um, again, of course, we're going to sponsor it with Four Wheel to Heal. And uh, it's going to be a fun time. We're going to try and get some vendors out this year and plan a little bit ahead of time, see if we can get some guys out there. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Let's see. Do you want to talk about oh, uh, what River Raiders doing? I heard so, they're doing some pretty awesome stuff. <laughs> yeah, so speaking of which, and I hate to take away any of the Terraflex's time, but it's a pretty cool um, Jeep that's going on out there. Is ter um, River Raider has started building the Hellcat, and what that is is they're taking the Hellcat engine and they're putting it into a Jeep to make it pretty gnarly. Anything Smoking else? them tires. <laughs> Cruising the strip in a Jeep instead of... Who needs to go wheeling when you got that kind of engine? You exactly. just cruise the strip, picking up exactly. ladies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, modding Jeeps, there's that other thing that we, you and I were talking about earlier. What's that thing called? The Nighthawk? Oh, I've only seen that on Facebook. I don't actually... I don't know. I didn't, I didn't look at the build sheet for it. I don't know if this thing actually exists or not, but let me tell you something. The amount of money that you're spending for that Jeep <clears throat> is not worth it. <laughs> it's like a hundred thousand dollar Jeep that you could send your Jeep to Terraflex and they could just build you something for about a fraction of the price. <laughs> so please do not even consider that thing. Uh, let us see. Jacob said, not that I know, but we'll be watching in the office. That's where we'll be watching it as well, unfortunately. 
Uh, yes, we agree. One of the best charities out there. Um, yes, the dates. We will definitely let you know. We've been talking to Roush Creek, uh, like we said. Um, they've already given us the green light, and we're tossing around dates. But as soon as we let them know, or as soon as they let us know, we'll make sure to let you guys know. Um, <clears throat> we're going to go here in about a second or two to the Tireflex interview. Mm -hmm. um, so if you guys want to sit back and watch it, um, as I said, Jacob will be available to answer any questions. Mm -hmm. um, you guys the can... chat will stay open while the, the audio plays. And you'll be able to chat with us. We'll give us our thoughts and, um, and opinions on everything, too. And we hope you guys enjoy it. It was certainly fun for us to do. And like I said, it's about 20 minutes. So um, hang in there. It'll be, it's a fun time. That's really cool. You guys have a lot of history then. You're not one of these companies that just started recently then with the JK craze. Yeah, we've been around for a day or two. <laughs> we still even get a lot of phone calls asking for Metco, so. Oh, really? Do you guys still offer? You, I guess you don't offer any of their stuff anymore? We don't. It breaks a lot of customers' hearts because they've done business with us for so long getting their older parts. Are the original owners of that still around, or is it? Are they pretty much gone away now? Yeah, it's actually been a family business from the start. So, um, yeah, their owners are still still in the family. It's a wholly owned. You know, we're not uh, it's, uh, just a, just a wholly owned company. So, yeah, no corporate thing going on. Uh, that's that's cool. Um, so I guess then the first the first product you guys kind of offered were lift kits for the TJs. You skipped over the YJ generation. <laughs> oh wow! Then it went to a three-inch kit, and then boom, you know, off, off we went. Yeah, no, and you guys are basically just based on demand is what you guys are kind of offering next. I know you, your your product catalog has grown immensely since those days. Nice. Um, 
Yeah, it seems like a lot of people, especially where you guys are located, mountain biking is a big thing out there. I know I certainly mountain bike as well. Um, what uh, What's your best selling product that you guys offer? Oh, okay. Yeah, you guys, um, how long have you been doing the axles for? You know, that's, you know what, that's, that's an interesting question. Right <laughs> Way back in the day, TerraFlex, you know, this whole this whole having an engineering department and doing all the R&D and so forth, we're, uh, we're kind of uh, on the forefront of all this thing. But we actually developed the CRD uh, design for the axle that's just a staple in the industry now. Everybody, everyone pretty much runs it now where you run the high pinion and the smooth bottom, which gives you the same clearance as a 44, and I mean, you still have a 60 axle, you know, with the rotated cover on it a little bit. So that was actually a TerraFlex design. So way back in the day, we were doing 60s, but we never, you know, uh, what would you say, pushed it. Yeah, we just, but here since the JK came out, we started doing our, uh, our 30 housing, replacement housing for the JK, as well as the 44, and now direct replacement 60s. Shoot that actual department. We've got three buildings over here that's uh, dedicated to that actual department where they're you know welding them together, they're uh, machining all the parts, then actually setting up the gears. So yeah, it's, it's it's quite a quite an endeavor for us now. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I think I saw on Jacob's Facebook page that you guys just started working on a new building um, for something like that. Are you are you just? <laughs> I'm glad to hear, glad to hear you guys are doing so well. That's fantastic. Um, speak. Yeah, well, keep in mind that we also have a lot of our stuff is offered in right hand drive too. So we're not just selling this to the U.S., but our thirties and forty fours are going to uh, Australia, and Thailand, and other countries that require right hand drive components. And we also have lift kits that follow that too. Oh wow! What made you guys decide to start marketing over there? You saw a big need for it, or? <laughs> um, speaking of R&D, are there any uh, any projects that you guys are about to unleash that you can tell us about, or is everything still pretty secret? Well, we are working on a, a harness for a unicorn. <laughs> I'll be excited to I'll be excited to see that. That's pretty neat.
first. <laughs> <laughs> I just did. I just did mine not re- not too long ago either. So I know what you're saying. How, how many uh, how many employees does Terraflex currently have? <laughs> and it used to be really easy to know everybody and know everybody's name, but anymore you just kind of walk around and you're like, who's the new guy? <laughs> <laughs> Two months. <laughs> you, so you guys don't have any crazy initiations for the new guy to make him go out and climb all over rocks or anything? No, we used to, we used to make people work in production for like a couple of days, or uh, there's been a few people that we've taken out on runs who had never really got deep in there. It's kind of more literally like a family event here. I mean, they got the owner's family, it's got a couple of kids running around, and, and I actually have three brother in laws working here. Uh, so it's kind of a good environment for everybody. Oh, that's Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, but we only have one vegan, and that's Dennis. We like a chicken that day. <laughs> uh, Dennis is a vegan? Is that what I heard? Did I hear that correctly? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you look. Yeah, right. No wonder you look so great for your age, Dennis. No kidding. I might send him. I might send you some bacon for your birthday. When's your birthday? Yeah. Oh God, I've had it before. It's it's horrible. I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> I can appreciate a healthy man, but we're talking about bacon here. <laughs> so, um, as we go into 2015, uh, what are some of your favorite events, and is there anything, um, some some places that you guys know of, or some people some people can find you at this year, some events? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be spread around pretty good this year. We're gonna hit a couple of East Coast trips, actually four. So we'll be at Atos, we'll be out at uh, um, Anum, Quadratech, the Ultimate Off Road, Jeep Beach, PA. Yeah, so we're getting a bunch of them on the on the East Coast this year, uh, and then some Jeep Jamborees. Uh, Jeep Jamborees are always a always a fun event. But it's, it's kind of interesting. Everybody's like, what's your favorite place to go? What's your best, you know? That's, each one of them has its own personality. I mean, you go to Australia, these guys, the beaches and the sand and stuff down there, it's just drop-dead gorgeous. And then, then you leave there, and you're like, man, that's the most amazing thing ever. And then, then they take you up in the hills of France, and it's just rolling hills and old castles and villages. And you're like, oh, my gosh, this is just amazing, you know, that these guys wheel in this stuff. Then you go up to Canada, and in the fall with the leaves and the, the rocks and the people are just amazing. That's one of the things. It's just, it just doesn't matter where you go. The universal truth is that Jeep people are awesome. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll definitely agree with that. And you're certainly making me jealous, too, uh, with all these places you've gotten to go. That's that's awesome. Is, yeah, when you... Yeah. Oh, overseas, I know, are, are Jeeps starting to become a lot bigger over there? I know that they're overseas, there are a lot under ran, Land Rovers and that type of vehicle. <laughs> they, all, they seem to all 
always find a way around to cheat the rules or to find the exception. And, uh, it's it's just going to get battle for There's some nice bills down there. So what you're saying is like living in California, is that what you're saying? It's <laughs> much worse. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds, for as beautiful it is, I don't know if I want to deal with all that. I might just drive a car over there and, and wheel over here. Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny, you go to places like China and, you know, you look at easily $120,000 for a Jeep. So they're, they're seeing a Jeep like we've seen Range Rovers over here as far as cost value goes. Uh, that's pretty interesting. At least they have the diesel Jeep. I wish that thing would get over here soon, would get built here soon enough. Yeah, no kidding. I've got I've got my eyes on all the rumor mills for the 15 or whatever year it's going to be. Um, yeah, if they brought a diesel pickup truck Wrangler, I'd be all over that thing in a heartbeat. Oh my goodness, you're not kidding. I, I'm in the market for a pickup truck, and I just wish that I knew. <laughs> exactly. Um, if there was one uh, product that you guys um, would really like to add to the Terraflex line, what do you think it would be? Yeah, it's a tough question. Yeah, it really is because there's so many different aspects. I mean, we've got so many things in the works already that we feel like we've got a good catalog or menu, so to speak, for um, the Wrangler. Hey, myself, what I like to see, just, and it's honestly for personal selfish reasons, I would like to see us have like a Terraflex uh, trailer, Adventure Overland trailer. Oh, that would. Uh, that would. I'm a, I'm a, Oh, that would be awesome if you guys did something like that and made it customizable through different different parts and stuff. Yeah, gee, it's funny because you say that, and we just we have a a little group within Terraflex. It's uh, and they they just call it shenanigans because these guys were were like there's a group like what are there six of us or something that it's just kind of like anybody comes up with an idea or whatever, we've just been go given open reign to to just do whatever. So when we say what we'd like to see, well, we, well anything I wanted to do, we're, we're working on, and, you know, we can we can make a prototype of it and just go play with it and see if it will work, if it's going to be a viable product. So it's really kind of a, a neat little niche in there for us to just open it up and go for it, you know, just just go out of the box and build whatever. I mean, we've got some bumpers that just came out of there that are just cool as heck that we're playing with, and, and there's some things with stretching the jeeps a little bit and just just little off the wall things you know that uh, that we're we're playing with in that department and that's where terraflex i think gets its little edge because by doing that and then having that going to the engineering department we can be out in front where the other companies just have to wait for us to come out with something and then knock it off you know so it does give us that expense of an engineering department and it, and it does hurt especially those engineers after they put so much time in something to see another company just just like oh yeah that's a good idea i'll take a picture of that and go make it you know <laughs> <laughs> nice but that's how it is you know it's just the way it goes and there's some companies that that's been their business model forever so it's just like you know that's just how it is you know we just roll with it and we'll just keep on going Yeah, you're not kidding. Um, I get made. I have a JKU, and I'm one of the few that I, in my group that does. And I get a, a hard time all the time for wheeling at Roush because a lot of those trails were designed for the TJ in mind, and it's tough to uh, to get the longer wheelbase through them. But the LJs will go right yeah. through it. I, 
can tell you from being out there uh, a couple months ago, it's still a little rough on that trail. You come down towards the end, and uh, it's you can't see anything while you're trying to make a three-point turn. <laughs> yep. But it's still one of my favorite trails that I've ever been on. If uh, we're about done here with you, I'll let you guys get back to your day. But if there was um, one product that, if people weren't familiar with Terraflex and there was one product that they were interested in buying, what would you guys kind of recommend, or where would be a good place to start with your uh, with your guys' products for a new Jeeper? Good deal. Well, thank you guys very much. I'm going to go to get off here and take a look at those speed bumps. Um, thank you guys again for everything, and uh, hope to talk to you soon this year. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we'll talk to you. Okay. Bye. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it's funny for everything. And, uh, All right, welcome back to... Uh, <laughs> Dave was giving us the countdown like you're about to launch a rocket. I was. I you're have, ready, Chad. I have Nine. to admit, I have, I have to admit that I was being the the loser that was sitting there counting it down because I was scared that I would miss the window. Angel's eating French fries, so don't mind him. Nom nom nom. It's, it's dinner time, man. It reminds me of Wayne's World, where we're sitting in a, in our mom's basement and she's cooking us dinner and feeding us beer. And my wife heated us up uh, cold pizza, and I'm in my kitchen. So yes, it's pretty much the same thing. Thank you very much, Michelle, for the pizza, and thank <laughs> thank you very much for Terraflex for for that interview. It's yes, been, thank you. It was Appreciate a wonderful you. time. I think right now would be a good time to. Oh yeah. Cheers, cheers to uh, Terraflex. Cheers to Terraflex, and Jacob, thank you for all your help. And remember. I drive a Nissan, so when I drink and drive, nobody in the Jeep community will get a bad name. But we don't drink and drive, so. <clears throat> Very true. Um, <laughs> moving on, let's talk about the... Uh... SEMA. Yes, Angel, you were at SEMA. Tell I, us a little I bit about it. I was at SEMA. I was fortunate enough to be brought on by a local fabrication company, Full On Fab. Um, got to go to SEMA, see a lot of cool stuff. I actually saw Dennis there, but I was too scared to talk to him because he's like an internet celebrity. Um, but we put together a shot at SEMA. <coughs> and that screenshot was when he says, I'm kind of a big deal and I'm totally making that into a shirt. So Dennis, I'm going to be walking around with your face on my chest. It's going to be awesome. Um, but we put together a really, <laughs> we put together a quick uh, top five of SEMA. This is uh, pictures that I took uh, while we we're at SEMA. Uh, start here. Um, this is top five. The first one. Well, the first one is the Chop Top TJ that um, Black Ops Four x Four did. I liked it because it's a TJ. And you didn't see too many TJs at SEMA. Uh, I also liked it because the interior was super clean. They didn't do any like crazy subwoofer stuff or any interior lights or anything crazy like that. But I liked it because it was just super clean. And the next one was... <clears throat> the forward control? No. River Raider. The River Raider. Raider. Okay. The next one was the... was the River Raider build, and the main thing that I liked about that was the rear steer. I know there's a ton of other stuff done to that Jeep, but the rear steer really got my attention. I just like the fact that that Jeep, they managed to... That picture doesn't give it justice, but they actually managed to make it kind of look like an aircraft. Um, yes, an that's airplane. the whole point. The whole point of that Jeep, and it's, it's actually a really cool Jeep, the way they did it and designed it. 
<clears throat> reminds me very much of the Jeep in our um, front intro video that was done by JP. Um, his Jeep is made to look like a bomber, but um, River Raider kind of did that theme as well and did a really good job with that. Yep. And the next one was a Scrambler. And this thing was just so immaculate. It was definitely a show jeep. Um, it doesn't look like we are broadcasting. Can somebody hop on chat and let us know if they still hear us? We just talked about the Scrambler. <clears throat> and if you guys are seeing commercials, it's because we don't want to pay $500 a year for a subscription. <clears throat> Uh, it looks like we're all right. It looks like we're good. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, so yeah, my the main reason I like that one is just because it was it was so clean and you don't see a whole lot of those builds uh, nowadays. And the next one, this is number two on my list. Okay. Justin Miller, the owner and driver of the LSX Willys. If you don't like this Jeep, it combines a Jeep, old Jeep, with modern day horsepower. And I don't know if you guys have seen his YouTube, but that thing is insane. Insane. Like, so much torque, the tire, the front tire comes off the ground when he launches. It's absolutely ridiculous. And he's actually a cool guy to talk to. He's not one of those people, um, you know, you go to car shows and you talk to people and they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. Like, he'll actually talk to you and, and run you through his build. <clears throat> really down to earth guy. And number one that barely beat out Justin the FC on tracks. When I saw this, I got weak in my knees. And I had a couple camera shots that were shaky because I couldn't stand up straight because it was so beautiful. I mean, that's just something you do not see. Um, I've seen a JK on tracks, and I think I've seen a TJ on tracks, and the Raptor on tracks that uh, what Ken Block did. I think yeah. it was Ken Block. Uh, but I've never seen... I mean, you don't see a lot of F, uh, FCs, period, much less on tracks. So that's just definitely number one in my book. And I'm laughing right now because I was like, really? And Angel was like, it's an FC on tracks. Of course, dude. Um, I've seen a bunch of trucks that are like that. But uh, yeah, he's right. I've never seen a yeah. forward control that's on tracks like that. Yup. It's pretty badass. <clears throat> so right. the next thing that we're going to talk about is the club of the month. Um, this club has the, probably the best name of any club ever. And I would bet my paycheck on it. Yes. Uh, so, Angel, tell us a little bit about this club. All right, I'm going to go ahead. We, we sent out a Facebook post a little while back asking people to uh, email what their club's about so we can feature them. And this is the one we picked. It's called Banana Slap Jeep Club. <laughs> Can't I, help but laugh at that I have no name. idea where that came from. I'd like to hear where it came from. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and read uh, what he wrote to me. He said, we have around 70 members annually, and we're based out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. We wheel our self-built course with 15 obstacles, including hill climbs, mud pits, and rock concrete areas to crawl in. We promote only legal riding, which I am for. I approve. We also wheel in Uware National Forest, where we host two club rides a year. Uh, another member has a course on their property that we ride. Uh, he says, we host Jeep Day three times a year at our course that is sponsored by Mike Kiefer, CDJR. Uh, let's see. He says, our Jeep Days are fundraising events for St. Baldrick's Foundation, Veterans Residential Services, and Toys for Tots. <clears throat> we also hold poker runs and participate in several charity ride-ins. We're also involved in Relay for Life, which is a big um, event supporting cancer research every year that lasts for 24 hours. And we also hold two blood drives a year with the Red Cross. So... That is our club of the month, Banana Slap Jeep Club. Thank you guys for 
giving back to your community and being awesome Jeepers. We appreciate it. And call me crazy, but I would join that club in a heartbeat because of all the great work they do in the community. Absolutely. And, and because of the name. And because of the name. I mean, you can't go wrong with a name like that. Yeah. You're gonna win a you're gonna win a contest every single time. <laughs> um, the next thing that we got to do here is possibly make a quick switch over. We're gonna have Angel and I and some of you guys are probably friends with a guy named, uh, who owns Full On Fabrication, and what he does is a lot of custom builds for Jeeps, mm-hmm. anything from your simple simple lift kit all the way up to big giant buggies, and he's actually the person who's been working on my Jeeps as well. Um, and my Jeep. Don't blame him for my broken down Jeeps. That's my fault. He is a legit guy and he does things full on. Um, but he, we're going to start featuring him every single month. And um, he is going to talk about different topics um, that interest people in the Jeep community. So we're mm-hmm. going to kind of switch over here and get him um, get him lined up and filmed. So Angel's going to get that rolling right now. Yeah, we're going to go to a, a blank screen. It may say that we go offline, but just bear with us because... We have this running on Dave's computer, but I have the file on my computer, so we're just going to switch over real quick. <clears throat> you want to go to the blank shot? Hot rods, trucks every day. Um, just basically, I don't know, fuck that one up. But. <laughs> the infamous factory JK drive shafts. What do you think when I say factory JK drive shafts? A fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I hate JK drive shafts with a passion. And what's your um, personal experience with them? How do they usually look when you get them? Almost always when I get them. Um, Control arms weren't adjusted right, so the rubber bellow that's right there on the joint itself is blown out. Uh, it's usually torn. Uh, it's out of grease. Uh, the bellow that's in the middle, where the accordion is, where literally the tube can slip inside of itself, is usually torn. Uh, they're dry. They make noise. Uh, they're pain in the ass to take out. I mean, what possessed the factory to put? I guess it's RTV or some kind of pipe dope on those 8, eight millimeter bolts on each end. I hate them. I hate them with passion. And they're not greasable, right? No. 100% not serviceable. Because that makes sense. I mean, I'll have, you know, to help people out, I'll, you know, pull the boots back like the bellows in the middle and grease it just to get them a little more life out of it. But, I mean, they don't stand a fighting chance. The first one, anything over... Honestly, two and a half inches of lift, if you feel it, it's guaranteed that front drive shaft is going to live a short life. <laughs> I mean, uh, their exhaust crossover is right underneath of it, and any kind of travel, it's all in it. Mm-hmm. Even the exhaust spacers, exhaust spacers really don't help. Uh, the only way to solve it is to put in uh, an aftermarket drive shaft front and rear. I mean, it'll ride so much better and smoother. Yeah. And that brings I mean, us that, to that's not discounting. You <laughs> still need adjustable control arms to set your pinion angle, and that's always a problem, too. But for what it is, JK factory drive shafts are worthless. They're not even worth the weight of scrap, in my opinion. <laughs> I hate them. So that brings us to the next point. Is there an alternative that won't require you to use a child as a down payment? Well, I mean, it sucks because to replace the front and rear, you're looking at a little less than 800 bucks. Uh, that's new yokes, uh, new drive shafts. Spicer stuff, 1310s if you want, or 1350s. 1350s is a little more money uh, with new yokes. Uh, the smartest thing to do is uh, plan short term if you put a lift kit on to do your front one first, then in a couple months just do your rear one to help break it up. Because your front one is only mid threes to do, and then your rear one is about 400 bucks. So, the best I can say is just break it up. Don't wait. 
<laughs> it's not something that is that what most you know, people do. Yeah, if wait, wait until, until it's too destroyed. long, then at that point, you need both front and rear at the same time. Then it is a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants to throw eight hundred dollars at something that you know came from a Jeep, came with a Jeep, and they feel like it should work, but yeah. it doesn't. All right, let's talk about fifty-inch LED bars. Jesus Christ! Why are they so awesome? They're so awesome because you can light up from here to Uranus with a light. So, what do you expect? <laughs> but, practicality-wise, A, they're annoying. Why they're annoying is most people don't realize this. When you drive down the road, they all whisper. They make a certain... Basically, what it's doing is creating a disturbance in the air. And uh, they make a J-channel for it to get rid of it, but a lot of people don't do it. And it's just an ungodly whistle. It's not bad with the top one. But if you go to like a spider web shade or no top, it's an unmerciful sound as you're driving on the road. And now it's gotten to the point where cops are pulling people over with 50 inch light bars because uh, they're not covered. And you can't pass inspection now with these. So you either have two options. You either have to find a cover and have it fully secured or take the light completely off to get inspected. Nowadays, technically, state law, you're allowed to have two fog lights below your headlights, then your headlights. Everything else, all these dual eight pillars, hood lights, real lights. Uh, up. This is Virginia, right? Yeah, this is Virginia. Virginia they have to come off. Either come off or be covered up. I mean, uh, the biggest problem, another problem I have with 50-inch light bars is people try and piggyback them because they want the 50-inch light bar to come on at the same time as another one. And they try and rely on their s bod and a 50 inch light bar by itself at least needs 25 amp fuse then you're running dual eight pillars so right then you have to over fuse the s bod which is a no-no because -no, uh, you're going to burn it up because that 50 inch draws that much power yeah. usefulness completely fucking useless where we live um on the trail if you have a 15 inch light bar on here behind me i'm going to walk back punch your light then punch you in the face <laughs> that's pretty much straight up how i feel about it so they're only good for leads if yeah you're night if you're a lead in night wheeling you know if we lived out west where you know you could light up from here to another state it'd be cool yeah. i mean yes like the johnson light valley type yeah shit. The light produced is amazing um but around here eight pillar lights will personally suffice or just a, like a single tent on the bumper but I mean, they make so much light in, in fog or snow or stuff like that. All you, you're going blinded by the light. Unless you're running covers on them, amber covers to diffuse them. Uh, so, usefulness wise, uh, that one's probably like a 0.5 currently where we live. <laughs> so, what do you feel about the people that say, oh, well, if somebody has their high beams on and flashes me, then I'm just going to turn my 50 on? Can that's that the reason. Accident? Oh, it caused an accident. You're 100% at fault. And that's what's caused the issue is so many people are putting them on the front or putting them in the back and putting them on a switch basically as fuck you lights uh -huh. for tailgaters or people to cut them off. And if you cause an accident, guess what? You're at fault. And you're going to be charged with at least reckless driving. Yeah. Then I'm sure it's going to go up from there. Yep. I mean, yeah, it's cool to let people know that, you know, they cut you off for their being a dick, but that's what your horns are for. My name is Brandon. I run full on. Uh, I'm that guy. <laughs> this shit's legit guy. Uh, build Jeeps, hot rods, trucks every day. Uh, just. Like it shows your channel. All right, guys. Looks like we had a little bit of technical difficulties. We apologize for that. I'm not sure quite what you saw out of that, but... Okay, there we go. Essentially, what we were saying is um, Turner holds no punches mm -hmm. and will make some people mad. He will make some people happy, but what he will do is tell you the honest-to-God truth. Yes, he will. And save you money while you're at it. Yes, because if you think something's a good idea because you saw it on Facebook or online, he will um, certainly shoot you down and steer you in a different direction. Yes, so he comes from that uh, that old school thought and that old school community of wheeling where just because it's cool and everybody else is doing it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best for your Jeep or it's the best for your wheeling. So for your budget, you might not be able to afford coilovers, but you want them. But Brandon's going to give you an alternative to that and make it work for your wheeling style and for your budget. So 
And I would like to address one thing. Jacob made a comment that um, night lights are big out west, which, hey, I will agree with that. If I lived out there in that area, I would be all about it. Unfortunately, 90% of my Jeep time is spent in the mall. <laughs> Set myself up for failure on that one. <laughs> Um, on that note, I think I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Shout out to Lifted Ladies as well. They're our good friends. And sh big shout out to Terraflex. Thank you guys very yes, much for Thank you for, for giving us your us. time. So we uh, would just like to say good night, everybody, and we look forward to seeing you next month. Good night. Cheers. Bing. Oh, hold on. I didn't stop it. <laughs>